sing some praises on this day, created and known by many names and our divine ancestors. Before we enter into this sacred place, we want to be of a good spirit. We want our hearts to be clear. We want to enter in a positive way that we don't take any energy away that we should not take away, that we only contribute positive energy to this space. Okay? Okay. there is a house um, right in the cemetery so you know try not to encroach over to her property she like when we come up she just don't like when people walk around the house uh, all right <laughs> but they've been very nice now this is the first part of the cemetery I will show y'all the oldest part and how many got a chance to meet Dr. Glover at the archive today? Yeah. The white man carrying his baby? Did y'all see it? I saw him. I saw him. Yeah, that was Dr. Glover. He's an uh, uh, anthropologist at, at uh, Georgia State University, and they're studying our cemetery. And uh, the mounds in the cemetery, the large rock mounds, are Indian graves. And uh, so this cemetery is 175 years from our family. And it's over 10,000 years old from the, for the Creek Indians. And the Creek Indians, what they did is they, they just buried right on top of one another and put rocks on them. So you'll see those mounds when we go up through here. But it's an old cemetery. It's one of the oldest in North Georgia. It's, it's about three acres. We have 275 bodies here. That's according to what they have done, a, um, what they call ego ground testing, to find out how many graves are here. That's 275. And 40% of those was born slaves. 40%. And all, but everybody up here was born in the 1800s. There was nobody up here that's not buried in, uh, born in the 1800s. Oh, all right. We may have some babies up here that was born in the 1800s. There's a lot of baby graves up here. A lot of babies. Like Mr. Bryant's grandfather, he don't have a headstone. That's one of the ones we really plan to get one for Mr. Spence Bryant. But he would always say, I'm going to clean my daddy's grave first. So we know these by people saying, that's my loved one, that's my loved one. That's how we found um, my great-grandmother, which I'll show y'all in a minute up on top of the hill. Uh, because when all the great aunts would come out today, they said, that's my grandmother's grave right there. We're going to clean it first. So that's how we know, even though they don't have a headstone. Now, this lady right here, was this Savannah Oglesby? This lady right here was named Savannah Oglesby. And uh, she died like at 90-something at years old. But we had two major churches in the community. We had Flat Rock uh, Methodist Episcopal, and we had Bethel uh, Baptist Church. Now, she was the lady that was in charge of Bath, uh, Bethel uh, Baptist Church. And um, Daddy King preached his first sermon in this community. Martin Luther King's father, he preached his first sermon right in this community at Bethel Church. She took care of that family, the King family, before all of them moved back to Atlanta. So she was a real powerful woman. And you know, women back in those days, she died in 1932 at the age of 90 something. Women back in those days didn't have that kind of power. But they said Savannah Oakley was a very powerful woman. Very powerful. Did y'all know later that Charter Bethel Baptist moved downtown? The church still exists, but it came right here out of Flat Rock. My great aunts and uncles said they used to like to hang with Martin Luther King's daddy when he came to the community because he had a car. Not <laughs> <laughs> very many people had cars. You know, they still they still drove in this community a horse and buggies up into the twenties. Of course, our roads didn't get paved at eighty-one, so <laughs> this was country for a long time. <laughs> 